was a mix between parts we had and bought. So uh, I recently earned recently earned some money, and we had a few parts lying around, like a case and stuff, motherboard, graphics card, uh, coolers. So I decided to throw the money I had into getting more parts, and we would build a computer, uh, like rather than buying something f for myself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this computer, sell it for I don't know how much we can to work at the price afterwards, uh, sell it, and then I'm gonna buy something for myself. So here we have an AMD Athlon X4 860K. This is pretty much the AMD A10 7850K with the graphics turned off and a slightly higher uh, clock speed. So this is a quad core. It has a 3.7 gigahertz, if you can read that, uh, base clock and a 4 gigahertz uh, turbo clock. Uh, it overclocks pretty well. This is my third build using this now, uh, and it's turned out perfectly fine. It's a, it's a really nice CPU to build with. So here we have uh, the VTX 3D R9280X. This is a three gigabyte card, uh, three gigabyte GDDR5. Uh, it is a really good card for the money, around 210 euros, roughly the same in dollars. Uh, Cooler is pretty good for the price. Uh, it takes an 8 pin and a 6 pin. And it is a relatively long card, but it's not too long where it's just obnoxious. So here we have an 8 gigabyte kit of HyperX Fury RAM. This is 1866 uh, speed. Now we will be changing this out for some 2400. Uh, I have some Kingston HyperX in my system that I'm going to be swapping out for this mainly because I want the white ones. Uh, and yeah, so we will be putting just plain black ones in, uh, except for white. It will also help the color theme faster RAM. My motherboard also can't handle 2400, so it doesn't really matter to me. But I'm happy. And uh, yeah, so that's the RAM. So here is a Cooler Master Sadon 120V. This is a 120 millimeter uh, radiator going to a pump and heat block combination. It is an all-in-one, uh, an all-in-one water cooler. Pretty good. Radiator is good. Good, uh, good uh, distance between the fans. You can probably see through it. Don't know if don't know if you'll, if you'll be able to see that through the camera, but you can. Believe me. So I have my mind made up that I'm going to use this, but shall we go into a snag? I have this kind of, might as well say, non-branded CPU cooler. It's, it's a relatively good cooler. They're really cheap. It'll cool it better than the uh, better, better than the stock cooler will. So we will be using this, but uh, just in case we have that as well. Here is our motherboard. This is an, uh, a Gigabyte F2A58M HD2. Uh, I can't remember that, so I have to look at the box. But uh, it has the AMD A58 chipset, which is, yeah, it's not the newest chipset, but it's not too bad either. It is perfect for the AMD A series, and it should handle our Athlon perfectly fine. So here we have a, uh, our DVD rewriter. Re uh, we had this lying around. This is actually the one I was going to put in my system, but I didn't. Uh, uh, just because I don't want to ruin the look of the front of my case. But uh, this, since we're selling it, we're going to put it in just in case they ever need it. Uh, and yeah, it'll make it easier to install Windows, obviously. So that's like 20 quid. Hmm. So here is our Western Digital Caviar Blue, one terabyte hard drive more than enough space for a gaming rig just because you're not going to have every single AAA game out there so I'm just going to have to cut this like a really bad scissors huh? Now 
to self, get better scissors. So there we go. As you can see it is blue. It says WD blue down there anyway. One terabyte. And of course you have your status, power and data. And this will be good for the system. Here we have our Corsair CX 600, 600 watt power supply. Uh, I highly recommend this power supply. I use, I use it myself. I'm still using it myself. And uh, I actually recommend any Corsair power supply because they are highly reliable. Here we, here we have our Windows 7. Now, usually on Amazon, we, we do buy them. We buy them on Amazon. Usually you'll be looking at 97 pounds. If you look right, you can actually get these for 30 pounds. That is around 40 something euro. Uh, same, same, same in dollars. So here we have our Cooler Master CM693 case. It's a hundred dollar case, hundred and thirty dollars if you buy it with the Sadon One Twenty V. I don't know if that if they're still doing that. They I remember when I bought it, you could buy it with the cooler. Oh, it's a heavy case. It's like I don't know how heavy it would be, but it's quite a bit. Yep. As you can see, it's missing a few things. Like we have some of the PCIe expansion slots out, just because I was using this as my case not too long ago. There we go. You see the giant side panel window. It's a nice side panel window, it'll look, I think it'll look deadly in this build with the LED fan and stuff. So now we're going to prep the motherboard. So I'm going to do, I'm put in the RAM first. Here we have our, our white RAM. This is 1866 uh, speed. This is 2400. So we're going to put this in. I think the Athlon will appreciate it and it'll be better for gaming. Uh, my system is pretty good for gaming already. There's the RAM in. Kind of high profile for the motherboard, but other than that, it doesn't look too bad. Also, when everything's on, it'll be kind of, um, I want to say stealthy, because it'll be pretty much all black. And yeah. Here we have our app on. We're going to put this in the motherboard now. So, we're just going to. Go. Be very careful. Now, you see gold triangle, this will go in the same direction as the triangle on the motherboard. You might not be able to see it, it's black just like the socket. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift up this lever, put in the CPU, let's sit in, and then we're going to close it. Yeah, and make sure it's not going anywhere and it's not and now we're gonna have to prep these for taking the cooler so here we have our back plate so pretty much what this is is this is screws that you push in these black bits sl slide on so that they don't turn or move. They're nice and sturdy. So now what we're going to do, we're going to lift up this motherboard. Put the back down. And now we're going to line the holes up with the holes in the motherboard. Do that. And now we're not going to put the cooler on yet, but to make sure that the back plate doesn't fall through, I'm just going to put the screws on. Now we're going to put in our uh, our DVD rewriter just to get rid of this giant hole in the front of our case. So this should just... Now this is a toolless system. As you can see, it's not going to move and it's flush with the front. And on this case, uh, on this case, it doesn't actually look too bad to have in, in, especially in the top one because it just looks normal. Okay, so now we're going to put on the front fan. So this front panel comes off with 
three clips on either side. I'm just going to tighten these down. There we go. I'm going in there. I'm putting the IO shield. Just tend to open this. You can just rip it. This IO shield is just kind of bare metal. You can get ones that are padded and everything like that. But we'll do. And we're going to put in our motherboard. going to use uh, some white spirits which you can use anything uh, that is 75% to 100% alcohol uh, if we just put a little bit of that onto our piece of kitchen towel take our CPU block and we can just We're gonna put in this, uh, this radiator. First thing I'm gonna dry fit it. So I'm just gonna leave you kind of dangling there. And then if I put this radiator roughly the same way I want it to go, so that'd be around there. I can just kind of dry fit the hoses. So I do want the Cooler Master symbol. You probably can't see it because my hand's in the way. Can't really fix that. Yeah. Cooler Master all good to be the right way up so be right there and that'll fit perfectly and the hoses aren't going to hit against the ram so that is the way I want to put it so I'm going to get all my screws and then I'll come back to you when I'm going to put in the radiator so we have uh, we have one screw in just so I don't have to like, struggle on camera so I'm just going to barely put it on Stop this fan. I'm gonna put it so that the lead is able to just, to just route it down the back here. So just down like that. And now if I hold up there, and take one of my screws. I'm just putting the last one in now. Sorry, I keep tipping off the camera. There we go. And uh, that's not going anywhere. No. Probably a nice blue LED fan while well, the computer's turned on. It should light up everything. We have the blue LED fan at the front, bringing in air that, that, that exhausts it. And it's perfectly fine. And here's the cap. <laughs> okay, so this is our second time shooting the uh, the thermal compound. Last time the camera wasn't in focus. So pretty much just put something roughly, roughly the size of a P in the middle of the CPU and that should spread out once you once you put on your CPU cooler. So 
So I have uh, I have all four screws on now. I'm just gonna have to tighten them up. Just take a flathead screwdriver. And then I'm gonna tighten them all to when they feel the exact same. not going to go anywhere. So now we're just going to install our, our one terabyte hard drive. Put, pull out a drive caddy. Just open it up. It's clipped into place. And it should just... Okay, so I have uh, two fan headers here. This one is the front fan, this one is the CPU pump. Now, uh, there's only one more fan splitter, or fan header, sorry, on the on the motherboard. So I use this fan splitter, plug both of, the, both of them into it, and bring it through and into the, into the only, only other fan header. So, here, let's see, I'm just gonna put it in there, put that in there. Now, if we go back around here, and then we can tidy that up. Here we have our satellites. We're going with the blue and black theme, as you already know. So we're going to use blue well, satellite. The cable is six gigabyte per second. All the modern ones should say six gigabyte per second on it. So it's going to be going at the hard drive. And now we're going to put the right angle one into the hard drive, just like that. And now, if we go back around to the front. So how this works is, this is SATA 0, SATA 1, SATA 2, and SATA 3. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this is going to be going into SATA 0. So I might actually be able to just, what I'll be able to fit through. I think, you know, it's just catching. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring it just through here. I'm going to bring it up into set of zero. And now make sure I don't see here, see the way it's pulling. You don't want that, so you want to try and get a nice curve on it. And then if I just kind of like bend the lead here, I can cable tie it there. And I'll have a nice curve in it. Then with all the other cables in it, it shouldn't look too bad. Put in the other set of leads. So, this is just going to go in there. There we go. I'm going to bring it out here. And then I'm going to bring it back in. I'm going to bring it into set of two. And like that. So if I bend the lead again, I can just cable tie it and it'll look better. I'll just get a cable tie. 
So I'm going to put the front I.O. in. Uh, I'll come back to you when that's done because this is a bit fiddly. I have the front I.O. which is like power LED, power switch now. And I have that in. I have USB 2 in. Right, so as you can see here, we have uh, our two USB 2 and two USB 3. Now I have the two USB 2 plugged in around here. It's plugged in here, comes through into there. And then the USB 2 plugged in right there. And right beside it here is another USB 2 header. Now, as for USB 3, this motherboard does not support USB 3. And as you can see here, we have the USB 3 header. This will not work. And so we have an adapter. It is a 19, which is they call it 20 pin, uh, to USB 2. So just a little adapter that we can use, which means we, we won't have two dead USB on the front of our case. Now I'm just gonna put this. Not long, it's not that long at all, but it, it will work. So now, take our USB 3 header, line the notch up, just plug it in. Now I can route this around the back. Works. This way, just plugs in there, and then there we go. Now I can bring this around the back and cable tie it up wherever I need it. Alright, so here I have the HD audio. Now I'm going to, you have your older kind of audio connector. We're not going to use this. Now I'm not going to cut it off because you never know when you're going to need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring it here and I'm just going to use a cable tie. And I'm gonna just put it around it. I know this, I know this cable ties a bit long, but it's kind of hard to hold this and then cable tie one hand. Well, and that's how you multitask. You see, I have a cable tied there. Now I'm gonna run this in a bit of a different, different place, just where them kind of like the power supply goes. Bring it up here, and I've actually done this on my own system before, so I know it works. Just plug the HD audio in, and now I can pull this down. So now we're going to put in the, uh, the power supply. Uh, this uh, Corsair CX600 is a 600 watt power supply. Went over that at the start. It is an 80 plus bronze, which means it will be relatively efficient. So now we can open this box. Oh. Power lead for obviously connecting to the wall. And in fact, for someone asking on one of my more recent videos, uh, the reason my my wall outlets look weird is because I am in Ireland. We use the same power connector as the UK. So now that'll just sit there, and it's actually this is much shorter than I ever thought it was. Well. Unless they've made it shorter. But as you can see that this will work perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, so now we're gonna hook up the gonna do everything for the motherboard. Gonna hook up the power to the hard drive, DVD writer, and then we can worry about the rest later. So here we have a set of power. It might just look like a ball of cables, but I'm gonna be using this to go into the hard drive. So if you can imagine it going in like this, and then this will just be here. This can hang there because there are two. I believe, yeah, here, here's the other set of power. So if we bring this around, by the way, you can see our graveyard of cable ties. No cable ties were spared in the making of this video. You can just plug that in. And then find a way to route this up here, maybe. But 
can worry about that later. Now, here's the other side. Bringing this will be a bit hard because I really have everything kind of piled in front of this. But I can just about, just about fit through. <coughs> Excuse me. All the pretty much every set it hooked up. Now I can just cable tie it up. Here we have a motherboard speaker. This is going to go right here. Right there. And now I can either bring it down through these, which I don't think I'm gonna do it's gonna be kind of facing backwards. So I'll leave it down and I could just get a black cable tie and do put it there. I could leave it the way it is, but I'd rather have it kind of tucked in so it's just it doesn't just like stick out like a sore thumb. So if we get a black cable tie, the only black cable ties we have are ridiculously long. So if we I have that cable tied up, it doesn't look too bad. I can probably chop that down a little bit more. But uh, now we're going to put in our uh, R9 to ADX. Now I can, go, I can only put it in one spot, which is here. So as you can see, we have both of our, our um, expansion slots taken out. So now I will come back to you when I have the case set up for me, for me to offer up the graphics card. Okay, so now. Can just so the build is done. Uh, I have to say I'm really happy with how it turned out. There you go. Power button. Get your reset button. Hard drive LED. Two USB 2. Headphone, microphone. Two USB 3. And then of course you have a place to put your phone or whatever. Or USB keys. Of course, if you smoke you like your little panel. Now you come inside you have your R9 280X, as you can see, you have your 8 pin and your 6 pin, uh, your radiator with your nice blue LED fan. There will be a little blue light that lights up in there as well. I have to say, the cable management turned out pretty well, especially for uh, for this motherboard. Uh, the fact that it's so small, we had to run some cables a bit long. If we had to have maybe an, maybe an ATX case, it would have. It, probably would have been a little bit cleaner but I think I made it perfectly clean there you have your front fan hard drive there's your power supply in the rear I.O. and everything and there we go Okay, so as you can see, here is the Cooter Master fan that actually came with this case in the first place. So, this is an aluminum fan. Uh, some of the LEDs aren't working properly, they flicker. Uh, so, we're going to switch it out for this one. This is a better, a fan of better build quality. Uh, it, look, it even looks sturdier and I just think it's a better fan. Uh, so... I'm guessing I'm gonna have to get another one because this actually did come out of my system. And then I put this one on my system, so now I'm gonna have to get another one. 
But uh, come back to me when I have the cool matcher fan on. Okay, so now we just have to hook this fan up. Then we can get Windows installed, all updates, everything like that. And uh, yeah, so. Just let me cable type this down and make it look a little bit better. Okay, so here we have a HDMI lead and uh, the, the TP Link. Uh, AB 500 nano uh, power line adapters. I did a video of this of this uh, a while ago, quite a, quite a bit ago. So first, I'm just going to uh, plug this in to the wall, then get it hooked up to the back of the computer. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sneeze. Uh. I've been coughing and sneezing now during the video. Well, I need to computer this way, but there we go. Now, if you want to have a look back there, and now we'll be hooking this up to my father's a uh, forty-inch ten eighty p screen that he uses as a monitor. Now, this graphics card does have a DVI and mini display port, so we're just using this because that's what this screen has. So here we have the computer. Now, turn it on. Uh, that LED fan flashes, but it's something to be worried about. You can probably hear the motherboard speaker there. And here we have it. And now it just it's just saying like, insert your Windows disk or whatever. So now we can turn it on, get Windows, get our Windows disk, get ready to do all this, and uh, yeah, come back to you. So now, we can just put in our Windows 7 disk. There you go. Stop. English is the only language we can actually choose from. Time and currency format. I go down to English United United Kingdom. Keyboard or input method, United Kingdom. Next. It's done now. Accept the license terms. You can read it if you want. Uh, custom. There we go. See how many discs we have. Next. Copy Windows files. So this will take a much longer than the Windows 8 video we did because the motherboard was already accustomed to uh, to Windows 8. Okay, guys. So as you can see. I have Google Chrome and Steam installed. That's pretty much the only things I have installed. Actually, that they are the only things I have installed. I have Grand Theft Auto installed. It took hours, just because their our internet isn't as good through power lines. But um, as you can see, there's no build number now, which means when Windows is activated and the little Windows 10 symbol is there, so it's ready for you to do whatever whatever you need to like